we're going to talk about selector issues and kind of how to uh, get rid of them. Um, this is what your selector plate will look like for version 2 type of M4. Uh, you can see here this is where the selector would be round and kind of hit this and then moves back. Um, this one doesn't move very much at all. It all depends on the uh, manufacturing of parts and then what I want to talk about <coughs> in particular is the places that you want to look at. Uh, we want to look in here, 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 and right here, and then if you were to, uh, sometimes here's something to look at, turn this over, you want to look at uh, this in relationship to moving up to your um, trigger. Okay, uh, then you want to look here, make sure that this is moving uh, properly. Now when you move this up, the safety is moving because the selector plate is moving and tapping it. Um, you don't need to necessarily have this happen. This function isn't really necessary, so don't worry about that. If this goes up and this doesn't move or anything, don't worry about that. What you want to do is get these functions um, individually all working for you. So let's say you place this into your um, into your gun, your your lower ex external body, and you go to switch to um, full automatic. What the selector plate does is it pulls back, and this piece right here, because it uh, touches the cutoff lever, it pulls the cutoff lever back. When that happens, from this view inside the gearbox, the cutoff lever would tilt up. You can see the arm right here uh, goes upwards. So that's in full automatic. Now if this right here is cut for some reason or you put in a different plate and it doesn't hit this cutoff lever's arm right here, you will not get this coming up. And another thing you can check is also make sure that this is not too tight. Um, your cutoff lever needs to move swiftly. You need to make sure that the spring can too. And you can see here that the uh, metal gearbox uh, has a hole within this area, but this spring can uh, get caught because it, as it's moving it has resistance hitting this metal uh, gearbox right here. Now some gearboxes they cut away this area a little bit, just shave it down so that the spring can move back and forth easily. <clears throat> You'll notice that maybe on the G&G gearboxes, I'm not sure if they've fixed them still yet, this spring will get caught back and forth right here between the uh, gearbox shell as you move um, the selector plate. From here it looks like that the spring does not go into the gearbox shell therefore it's not happening. You can see that this is just not going into uh, the spring does not tilt inwards in there. It's just straight across so that's a good thing. <clears throat> so we have our, our um, selector here and I'm gonna give just a scenario just for the heck of it. You know, if we're going to talk about selectors, might as well talk about everything. You tighten your pistol grip, and now your selector plate doesn't move very well. It's because you need to shave a little bit of this off right here. Or you need to um, not tighten the pistol grip so tight, or modify the selector piece itself. Uh, sometimes they are round, sometimes they are oval, sometimes they have a shape that comes like a spade. Uh, it, it will be a sharp diamond point right here. So it will be kind of circular, but then it diamond points at the top. Which uh, is kind of similar to like an almond, I guess you would say. So a diamond shape there, and as, this, as that turns, it makes it a little difficult to um, sometimes pivot correctly. Uh, what I suggest is just making a completely circular uh, selector piece that hits this, because that's what a lot of them have, right? Um, the inside of the selector piece can also uh, become, uh, the threads can get messed up if it's plastic. Uh, they're usually metal, uh, which is better than plastic. Um, it just depends on the manufacturer if it's a sport line or not. Uh, but basically all it does is it uh, rotates within here. So as this rotates it just, oop, that was a big bad bad. And here's the spring. 
And you can strength, strengthen uh, these springs a little bit. You don't need to do too much. Um, but anyways, so it would rot it would just rotate uh, its shape by pushing this. Okay. If you feel stiffness and tightness, depending if your let's say your brands don't match, um, what will happen is, excuse me, these go in sometimes differently. Um, sometimes they go in backwards. Sometimes they go in this way. It just depends on the uh, manufacturer, but usually they go in this way and then uh, come back. This one looks like it goes this way and just happen to pop out. Okay, so um, let's talk about right here on these selector plates. There is usually a contact, which I really do not like. Uh, the contact itself is for inside this inside the uh, trigger contact housing right here. There would be a contact as well. And what this does is uh, it makes it so that you can't shoot on on uh, safety because the contact um, would not register uh, to uh, shoot. Um, so once you get into semi and full auto, it's you know touching the contacts properly. Uh, however, there's an issue with this is that you're relying on these bent up pins underneath that touch the selectors um, Plate contact you can see that there's an indention here where they would have had that but they removed it on this one <clears throat> I don't like this that design because what happens is the plates down below the uh, the, the connectors bend a little bit uh, away from this metal and then uh, the don't connect anymore so you, your gun would stop firing you'd have to go in there and press down and um, then it would fire so what I usually do is I remove this and uh, fix the inside just remove the design or if you have a MOSFET you can solder um, depending it has to be a real MOSFET you want the small gate wires going through to your trigger uh, for doing that type of thing the reason is, is because if you don't have a MOSFET and you solder there um, you can have melting, you know, you've got a high current flow going through here. And that's something that might happen uh, on here as well. I've seen these uh, melted some parts here. I've seen this that I haven't, but I mean, I've seen them done when I get into the gun and it's already corroded or melted um, because of the resistance here too. These don't really touch uh, too well. Um, so imagine electrons trying to get here and then they just can't make it because of this. So I uh, don't like that designed. And if you do take it off, um, a thing to note is that this now has lost uh, a gap of space. You can see here that this is straight. And when you take off the, the metal connector, sometimes there's a little bit of a gap here. So when you switch to uh, safety, which would be right here, this is safety. This when this is at 90 degrees. Um, on the other side, when you switch to 90 degrees, let me go ahead and show here. There's 90 degrees. There's 90 degrees right there. You can see that the uh, safety on this is not the greatest. See how the trigger would easily uh, hit into that. Um, so an issue with this, you can see, is that there needs to be uh, some type of something here. Um, you can add material. Uh, you could even change the inside of this um, so that even if it gets right there, you could shape the material on this. Uh, really all this does is it gets in front of the trigger and if it doesn't get in at a straight angle like it is now um, see how the trigger cannot go forward let's say you have it a little bit below you can knock it down while uh, shooting um, also if it was too high just to give an, an example but normally it doesn't get that high that would that would require um, moving your selector plate past this 90 degrees of this tab um, which really can happen. I mean, you really can't see it happening. Um, so let's talk about the uh, semi-automatic on this. So you're switching your selector, and you, now you know why your safety is probably not working. Um, there's a modification here to get rid of this gap. You see there's a gap in there, and you can pull the trigger a little bit. Um, sometimes the safety lever on the other side has uh, material removed. Um, that helps it slip, but what you want to do is make it uh, the same angle and remove this distance, but you don't want it touching. You want a slightest gap so that this can always go up and get in front of the trigger. 
Um, but let's talk about the semi-automatic now. So you know why your, your safety might not be working uh, properly, but the semi-automatic is a little strange. Uh, semi-automatic is just as you let go of the uh, selector plate, when this becomes neutral right here, so this is where semi-automatic should be. Now the way to really know is to look up through your gearbox shell here and your cutoff lever should uh, be positioned in a way See, it's not really positioned in a way to grab the trolley. Um, let's turn this over. So it should be positioned like this. That would be semi-automatic because as your trolley goes forward, you can see that I cannot push the cutoff lever up. It would grab the uh, trolley. I'm trying to do it by hand. It's kind of hard to do. Uh, but basically what happens is the cutoff pulls the trolley up. The trigger bypasses below and that's how the cutoff stops your electrical uh, connection because it's moved out. Um, so you can see here the way to know this is on safety or not. Let's put the spring back in and if you have a hard time doing the uh, spring on these all you really need to do is get something like a, a flat head like this. We'll put your finger over the spring and just get it and pull it back and then let go. And you can see that's pretty uh, easy, some plastic, but um, right here as I let go of the selector plate, this should be semi. So if I turn this over and I'm looking in here, does that really grab the uh, trolley? I can pull this forward here and I can see that it does not. So there might be an issue with this. However, when you put this in your lower external body, sometimes the selector moves it a little bit differently. So it may actually be about right here. And this, in fact, would be a uh, semi because you can see the cutoff lever move fo more forward. And uh, if you check the other side, it would be like that. Um, you can still see the trigger can pull with the safety tab, uh, safety lever here. And uh, the cutoff would work uh, properly. So if it was to move this over to full auto, you can see that. Move it over to safety, you can see that. Um, so I would probably work on this. Um, it's a possibility that, again, you know, to position, uh, the position of your selector um, could be pushing this really far like that. Uh, it shouldn't be because that's kind of bad, um, hurting this tab right here. But uh, if it does that, this will come up really high to maybe about here and stop the uh, trigger from uh, moving anyways. <clears throat> so what else can I really say about this? Again, uh, Space here is kind of important. Um, the spacing here is important. Uh, the shape here, your, you know, I mix these parts all the time. Uh, you could have VFC external body parts with an aim top gearbox, aim top selector. All these, all these things uh, lead to issues. And if you don't know how all this works, um, even stock sometimes these things have issues. I've had GMP issues where you know you turn the selector it's not working properly and I have to go in there and modify it myself uh, but that's pretty hu pretty helpful I think I don't think I missed anything that's really necessary these can crack a little bit here you want to be careful of that uh, the space right here um, to the trigger housing with the contact sometimes it pushes up on the selector so the selector piece right here does not actually fall down into um, it glides very e easily so if you had uh, noticed that you know you're having issues with this moving you could look at that and make sure that there's some piece of plastic or something in there so you can glide this uh, very easily over <clears throat> um, you could look over here make sure that there's no cracking in this area I've seen stuff like that happen um, I think that pretty much covers everything uh, you know just looking at this <clears throat> You can do little modifications to certain things. I mean, you could take your cutoff lever here and add material to the back of it. You could cut this uh, down just to help move your semi-automatic or full auto differently. Maybe, maybe you're getting full auto on semi-automatic. You could remove a slight little bit right here. And so when you're moving your selector, that space wouldn't be there and this would be more uh, forward. So there's little things you can do with this.